Ladies and gentlemen, I wanna welcome you to a very business-centric video. This isn't gonna be something that's very flashy. There's not gonna be a ton of B-roll. This is gonna be something to where you can sit down, chill out, take notes, and I wanted to try to dramatically impact what you do in your business. I've gotten a lot of questions recently. A lot of people come in here and they wonder where to start. So that's what we're gonna be covering today. I've decided I'm gonna make a couple of I say a couple, but it's going to be a bunch of these one-off videos that cover a singular topic. We usually cover these topics in full on our coaching calls. Um, so if you're interested in that, please let me know. But if there's something that you want me to cover, uh, I'm going to start doing these more and more frequently. And today, a lot of people have asked where to start, and I want to really talk about that. So when I say where to start, this isn't going to be like, all right, theorize the name of your business, what you want to do, and the LLC. Those are the very, very basics. And if you want me to go over the sheer bare bones basics, I can definitely do that too. But this is going to be like, hey, I've been either doing video or I want to get into video and I want to start working with clients or I have some people that I've worked with before and I don't know where to start to start upping my revenue to transition into full-time video. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. I'm gonna to give you everything that I have off the top of my head. I have a few notes here to go over to make sure I stay on track and we're just gonna talk. So when it comes to business, specifically filmmaking business, your Rolodex of clients or your relationships to the people that you know is going to be your most important asset. In the graphic design world, when you retire from graphic design, you can sell off your Rolodex of clients to people and it's like a huge thing. I want you to start thinking about the relationships, the people that you have, the people that you know, and this is your most powerful asset, the relationships that you have. That is the way I work my business. That is the way I've been able to grow. I focus purely on relationships. Because the nature of business is trying to get all of these cold leads into warm leads, into people who believe in what you do, in the customers, that is the abstract nature of business. The best thing you have right now are the relationships that you built. So if you've done work for people already, I want you to write an apology letter to them, a way to open up a conversation saying, hey, you know, maybe... I've changed my capacity or maybe I've kind of niched down more and I want to let you know that I really enjoyed the work that we did together in the past. We created some killer stuff and I want to let you know that I'm open and available to take more work. I want to start more of a relationship with you guys. I want to be more present. I want to be more involved to the things that you do because that is going to get you more ongoing business. So the best thing that you have are people that you've worked with in the past, that you've done good work for, that's better than any warm lead because those people already believe in what you do. Those people are already assets to your business and you have a running track record with them. Reach out to them. That's where I would start if you've worked done work with anybody. Now, this is where I've gotten a lot of my business from. Recurring business probably makes up 70% of the work that I do, kid you not. It's just people I've done work for who want to do more work with me. And it's because I do my best to stay top of mind with them. Always, always, always making sure that they're happy, that they're well taken care of, that anything they may need in the realm of video, even if it's not me doing video for them, if they need counseling on who to hire, if they need uh you know, just thoughts for where they could take marketing, their marketing team or where they could take other businesses they're working with. I want to be their filter essentially for everything creative and video. That way, when they have a thought about doing video work, they always consider me. I want you to go above and beyond for the people that you've already done work for. And I'm not doing free work for them, but I'm doing these thoughtful gestures constantly. So, Get an apology letter out and start a new foundation with any relationship that you may have already done work with. That's where I would start, number one. Number two, I want you to understand a few things. So I'm going to get into a couple of notes here. There's a couple of notes that I uh, recently had on a call. So if you want to get in that group discussion, please let me know and I can answer questions a lot more in depth. But I want you to understand marketing versus sales. And this is going to be tying into 
how you're spending time on and in your business. For me, when I first started doing this, I was spending a lot of time in my business, not working on my business. That means I spent most of my time filming and editing. If that is you, you are just like me. No need to worry. I spent about 95 to 99.9% of my time either filming or editing. Very little marketing, very little sales. I was not working on my business, trying to get new clients, trying to build new relationships. I was just working on the things that came my way. That is why I hired an editor to try to open up that capacity so I can focus on doing the things that only I can do. That's where I want you to be focusing on your work, on the things that only you can do. All the editing, all the the things that really don't necessarily need your hands on, the cutting through pointless B-roll, the the simplest the simpler stuff like finding songs. We're going to start getting into the mood of outsourcing, but that's going to be another video. I want you to start understanding the difference between marketing and sales. See, marketing scalable, builds awareness. People know who you are. You want them to know who you are. And the sales are the personalized activity that convert people into clients. Now, I want you to understand the funnel because this is something we talk about a lot. The funnel, I wish I had a good graphic. Uh, The top of the funnel, you're generating awareness. As you get to the middle of the funnel, you're converting interest into prospects. You do that through nurturing and following up. So the people who are aware of you, those we call leads, you turn those people into prospects. And then at the bottom of the funnel, you close sales and build compelling offers. Now, overall, it's a really easy thing to visualize, but because the funnel is a funnel, Basically, how I want you to think about this is if I reach a thousand people through just general marketing and general awareness, well, maybe 10 percent of that group, if I'm lucky, are interested and they have a problem that I can solve. Well, not a thousand people have turned into a 100 people. Well, maybe I'll actually get in contact and have a have a right fit with 10 percent of those people. So now we've gone from a thousand to 100, to 10. And here's the thing. You want to be closing about 50% of your sales. Now, 50% is a large number. And some of it, some of, for some of you, it may be like, why only, why only 50%? Because me, I want to know if 50% of the people I'm reaching out to or are reaching out to me are saying no, strictly based on pricing. I don't want everybody to be saying yes, because that means I'm priced too low. And I don't want everybody to be saying no because that means I'm priced too high. I encourage getting yeses and nos. That lets me know that I'm right where I need to be to start converting the maximum amount of people that I can at the maximum amount of price that I can. So out of a thousand people that you impact, I'm only working with five. That's what I mean by the funnel. So the funnel is going to be one of the most impactful things to keep in mind. And how I keep track of the people that I am impacting or that want to work with me, I use a a platform currently that I'm integrating called Bloom. I'll leave a link below. Uh, I can't give you a lot of information on it at the moment because I'm not fully integrated it, but you need a system to keep all of this stuff organized. And right now, that looks like the way that I'm going to be going. So I'll make another one of these probably strictly talking about that soon. Now, we've talked about breaking down the funnel and trying to get to work with people. We talked about building a little bit of marketing, and we haven't touched on too much stuff. Here's the other thing. This is, once again, if you were to start and you've done your apology letters and you've kind of started focusing on building relationships rather than just one-off clients, this is one of the most important things after the fact. How to ask for a referral. After you've given good work, after you've done something incredible for somebody, you need to follow up. That is something we don't do often at all. After you've given the massage, as Christo says, you've given the massage and they're in a good position, that's when you hit them with the ax. Would it be crazy? And I love this positioning. Would it be crazy 
to ask you if you know somebody who could benefit from the work that we do. This comes from Phil Jones' framework of exactly what to say. You keep the client, and I can make an entire video on this, you keep the client in a position of power with no questions, questions that lead to no. So I don't want to be like, hey, do you know anybody that uh, that I can do work with you for? And they be like, oh, well, yeah. But now it's like, I'm doing it for you kind of. It feels a little weird. We keep them in power. Would it be crazy if I asked you if you know somebody who could benefit from my work? And they'd be like, no, that wouldn't be crazy at all. Now they feel a little bit more empowered. You can do this in any situations. Even if you do that, it's like, okay, well, I don't want to pressure you right now. You know, I know we have like a, a good vibe going, but um, would it be wild if I just followed up with you next week? And they're like, no, yeah, you follow me next week. It'd be, it's going to be great. And then after, once you've kind of scheduled this referral call that you're going to follow up with, I love to I love to play the guilt card to hop in and be like, yo, I, I know you probably haven't had time to really deep dive and think about anybody else that could work with my services. And they're usually like in a hot seat and it's like, ah, oh, no, I should have I should have done it sooner. I'm going to do it right now. And I like to keep things simple. I like to be like, yo, I tell you what, you, you know, it doesn't have to be anything formal. You can put us in a group chat. Um, I just basically need the introduction. Uh, I don't want to put any weight on you, but I know we've done some great work. I really enjoyed your vibe. And so I want to know the people that you know, because working with you has been really, really awesome. So let's just make a simple, a simple first impression and we can go from there. You keep it simple. You keep them in power. But once again, you just converted another cold lead into a warm lead because cold leads are people that you know about. They have no idea. They have no idea about you. But now thanks to somebody you've done work for, you ran through your apology letter. They've introduced you as a trusted vendor. You don't have to do the the weird conversations, the sales tactics, all of that. You have proper introduction now. And that's what's going to help drive the sales of your business. So I really want you to be focused on building relationships with the people that you have done work for, the people that you have in your circle. I actually do this with uh, creative agencies, mainly. Creative agencies are a great source because they have constant clients that need video work. They usually can't provide video work if they're like a website or branding creative agency. They need video to complement their website. They need video to complement their things. I try to stay top of mind just to be an asset to them. And then you keep the loop going. Now, if you're interested, I can definitely go deeper on um, what a code outreach versus warm outreach is and how you can start converting people from code outreach into warm leads even more through the content that you create, through the things that you do for your business. So if you're really interested in that, please let me know down below. But once again, I want to start making these types of videos, just no filter, just straightforward with you guys to try to get you literally just get you more money, more than what you put in is what I want to give you here. So if you have any questions, if you want anything covered in a very specific topic, please let me know because I'm going to start doing a lot more of these. These are just condensed versions of the coaching calls. We really go in depth and we really deep dive in the community section of everything. So if you're interested in joining, if you're interested in taking stuff like this further, or if you're really interested in content like this, we have calls every two weeks. So please let me know. And yeah, I will see you in the next one. Peace.